Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach Rizet with Build Box. This is part two in the Make a Simple Game video series. In this video, we are going to go over some camera movement where we get the camera to follow our character. We're going to create a UI score label where we can see the score and see our points and what our, what our score is. And we're also going to create a defeated animation using the debris explosion node. So let's go ahead and jump into this. This is part two. Um, also, you can see here that we um, we're moving down the path, but we're not, we're not actually following the character with our camera. So let's go ahead and let's fix that real quick, and then we'll we'll add in a couple other things here in this node map. So let's go to our 3D world. Let's select our camera here in the outliner, and then over here on the right, we want to change position follow to character. Okay, and what this will do is this will allow us to follow the character down the path with the camera, and that's great. Um, that's really awesome, but uh, the camera is moving up and down right now as we're jumping, which is kind of not what we want. We want to just we want to just follow the character down the path. We don't want to go up and down, up and down. So let's exit out of this uh, preview and let's change the follow force in the y direction to zero. So now it's no longer going to follow the y direction. It's no longer going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, the other thing I don't like right now is the gravity is a little bit low. Um, it's regular gravity, it's negative 9.8, but um, let's go ahead and let's increase gravity so that uh, the, the character is not as floating so much on these jumps. So let's exit out of the preview. Let's select our 3D world here in our outliner, and let's change the Y value to negative 20 for the gravity. And so now when we jump, it's just going to barely hop over and it's a, a lot more like a video game. So that's kind of what we want. Let's go ahead and exit out of the preview. Okay, awesome. The next thing I want to do is I, I don't really like the camera angle so much just going straight down this path like this. So um, I want to give it a little bit of an angle and kind of give it back it off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to camera view mode and then I'm going to, what this does is this allows you to look inside of your scene editor here, it allows you to look at what you're seeing in the camera. And I'm going to change this around so that I'm happy with the way things are looking. So I'm kind of thinking this is what I want to go for. Yeah, something like this is more of what I'm looking for. A little bit of an angle so I can kind of see the path a little bit better. And I can still jump and I can still see everything and I'm happy with this. Okay, cool. So I'm going to get out of camera view mode now. Be careful when you're in camera view mode because it does affect, you know, the, the view of your game. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, so this looks good. Now let's go ahead and let's make it so that we're able to be defeated when we run into these enemies. Because right now we're running into these enemies and it's not really doing anything to us. So I'm going to move the preview back here into the center. I'll exit out of the preview. Let's go into our main character's node map. And let's go ahead, let's add in, go to actions, go to if collide, bring in an if collide node, bring in an event and then bring in a defeat node. Okay, and we're also going to bring in a delay. Go ahead and search for a delay up here at the top. We'll bring in a delay node. I'm gonna zoom out here, reposition this a little bit. And then the last piece of the puzzle is we're gonna get a debris explosion node, and that's what we're gonna use for our defeated animation, okay? So the way we're gonna hook this up is we're gonna say, if I collide, with an enemy, so I'm gonna say the affected asset is an enemy, okay? And then also, um, one thing that you, it's a good idea to do, uh, because our collision shape is, is the same scale here, it's one, one, one for this collision shape, and it's one, one, one for this collision shape, it's a tiny bit hard for BuildBox to register that it hits an enemy every single time. So what I like to do is I like to just add in a little bit more scale on the uh, on the um, on the enemy or on the enemy collision shape or actually better yet what's even better is to go to the start node and then just take down the collision shape just a little bit on on the size okay so 0.9 uh, so 0.99 it, or 0.98 is it would be great and uh, 0.98 for all of these 
um, so that the collision shape that's going to hit the enemy is just going to be just a tiny bit bigger, and so you all you never have problems with running into enemies. It's always going to register now. Um, so once you collide with an enemy, you make sure that the affected asset is enemy. Um, you want to you know defeat the character. And then we're going to have a delay that plays out and we're gonna set the delay for one and a half seconds. Okay, so let's do 1.5 seconds. And then at the end of that delay, we're gonna set off a game over event. Okay, and we're gonna need uh, this one and a half second delay is so that we can watch this debris explosion happen and play out. Okay, but we need to find some debris that we can use for this explosion. So let's go ahead, let's do that. So we can hook this up real fast for right now. Let's exit out of this. Let's go to our 3D world. Let's go to our asset library, go to our shapes, double click on cube, and we're gonna use this as our debris. Let's get out of the asset library, select our cube. It's already dynamic, which is what we want, that's good. Let's go ahead and let's name this debris. Okay, perfect. Now let's go into our main character's node map again go to debris explosion and select our debris. And then that is what we're gonna send flying for our game over. Okay, great. So um, we're now colliding with enemies. It's going to defeat the character. Um, we have our spike enemy sent to the collision group enemy. So this should work perfectly. All right, so let's take a look. I'm gonna just let the character hit the enemy here and then boom, you get, you know, you get all these cubes um, exploding and then the game is over now. I, there's no way I can um, start the game over. So I can refresh the game um, and that's really, uh, that's really great. But we want to do a couple things now. We want to make it so that we can see our coin label here up at the top and so we can see how many points that we're getting. And then we also want to add a restart button so that we can continue to play our game and restart our game. So let's exit out of the preview. Let's go over here to our mind map here, our little mind map button, and let's right click and we're going to add a new UI screen. Okay, this is going to be this is going to be our where we have our coin label. So we're going to name this 3D World UI up here in the top corner. And we'll go ahead and hook this up. And then another thing, we if you want to add a UI screen, you can also just click on the UI screen over here and drag it out into your scene and drop it in. And I'm going to go ahead and name this one Game Over UI. Okay, game over UI. Okay, perfect. And what we're going to do is we're going to send our player to the game over UI and then restart the game. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So let's double click on our 3D World UI. This is our 3D World UI. And we're going to need an event observer to observe this event, this game over event that's happening. And we're going to need it uh, so that we can send our player to the game over UI. So let's name this game over. Luckily, the function type or the, the event type is already set to game over, which is great. So now when we go back to our mind map, we have this game over output option and we can hook it up to our game over UI. Okay, great. So let's double click on our 3D world UI. Let's go ahead and add in a label here. This is gonna be our score label. Let's change the function to score. Let's change the world to current world. Let's keep the score type as points. Let's change the amount to current, let the alignment to left, and we'll go ahead and click stick to edge. Okay, great. Now let's go into our 3D world and let's use this, uh, this diamond here as um, as a, a, a label for our 3D World UI. So I'm gonna hit these three little dots here and I'm gonna export my asset. And I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna call this UI Coin Label. Okay, and I'm gonna export it out to my desktop. And then I'm gonna go over here to my 3D World UI and I'm gonna drop in that coin label. Okay, and so now I've got this little diamond here and I can use this as a little reference for my points. So I'm gonna double click on my diamond here and go into my diamonds node map, and I'm gonna delete a lot of these extra animations and these add points nodes. All these nodes I, do, I no longer need because this is just a decoration. I do like the rotation though, so we're gonna go ahead and keep that. And then finally, um, I uh, went ahead and I searched for a play button here for us. 
and I, I grabbed this green play button here. I just searched for play button PNG um, on Google Chrome, and then I'm going to right click this. I'm gonna save this image. You can search for this green image as well, and I'll share this with you in the, um, in the description of this video. And let's go ahead and let's just call this green play button. Okay, perfect. We'll go ahead and hit save. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. And then I'm going to go into my, uh, go over here to my mind map, go to my game over UI and drag in my uh, green play button as a navigation button. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna shrink down this navigation button uh, and we're gonna keep the aspect ratio by holding the shift button down on our keyboard and then dragging one of the corner nodes. And if I let go of the shift button, I can like move it around freely, but you wanna hold shift down and then it'll keep that aspect ratio. And I'm gonna make it about this size and then I'll leave it right here. And then what we'll do is we'll call this restart button, restart button and then we'll change the function to restart. Okay, cool, I think we are looking at the tail end of this. There's just one last little thing that I wanted to add in here before we end this video, and that is we want to put a jump limit on our character because when we play the game right now, we're able to just jump, 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 jump until the, until the character goes, oh wow, uh, goes flying right off the screen. So uh, we don't want that. We want to put a jump limit on this uh, jump. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the jump node. We're gonna go over here to jump limit and let's just do a jump limit of two. Um, but if we put a jump limit of two, we need to reset the jump so that we can start jumping again after we jump two times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab another if collide node here. We're gonna hook it up to our start node and we'll say that the affected asset for this one is platform. So whenever we collide with a platform, we want to reset the jump. Okay, and let's go back to our 3D world. Let's look at our platform and let's make sure that the platform's in the collision group platform. Okay, perfect, it is. So this is gonna work. So I'll go ahead and press play. I'll jump twice and then I'm not able to jump anymore until I you know, collide with the platform again and then I'm able to jump again. So uh, that's it, that's it for this game. The, I know this was a real simple game. I'm gonna be doing a lot more advanced stuff and doing some 2D tutorials as well. So keep an eye out for those tutorials coming as well. Please let us know what tutorials you would like to see in the comments below and we'll go ahead and we'll try to make those tutorials happen. All right, awesome, we're able to press the play button, restart our game. Okay, this is looking good. I'll go ahead and I'll share this BB doc with you in a download link here in the description of the video. And uh, thank you so much, Boxers, for watching this series.